Welcome back young scholars. In this video we will be discussing Rome in the classical age. So the big questions you need to be able to answer after watching this video are first, how did the location of Rome impact its development? Second, how did Rome transform from a republic into an empire? And then there'll be another video that will cover two more big questions relating to Rome. So the first big question, how did the location of Rome impact its development? The city of Rome is centrally located on the Mediterranean Sea. It's also located on the Tiber River in the center of the Italian peninsula, which meant that it had a geographically strategic spot, and this would allow it to be accessible to a number of existing trade routes across the Mediterranean Sea that were first developed by the Phoenicians and then later used by the Greeks. Now, like other cities in the classical era, Rome became a center for trade. Throughout the city, there were a number of markets that developed. There was an imperial palace, which was the central location for the government. And also, there were a number of temples upon which religious rituals were performed. Rome, architecturally, is probably best known for its entertainment venues, like the Colosseum, which you can see here and the Circus Maximus, where chariot races were performed. Rome, again, it starts out as a small little city in the 6th century BCE. Over time, it is going to expand across the Italian peninsula and into parts of Europe and over into the Middle East on the Anatolian Peninsula and also into North Africa. Eventually, it's going to spread out across the entire Mediterranean Sea. So at its peak, the Roman Empire included nearly all of Europe, parts of the Middle East, and Africa, which includes 40 modern-day countries. So it was an incredibly diverse empire with people of different ethnicities, speaking different languages, and practicing different religions. Which leads us right into our next big question which is how did Rome transform from a small city into a vast empire? When we're talking about Roman history, we can really break it down into two periods. There is the period of the Roman Republic, which lasts from around 509 BCE to approximately 27 BCE, and the period of the Roman Empire, which lasts from 27 BCE to 467 CE. Now again, that date, 27 BCE, is not set in stone. There's certainly a lot of debates about when Rome actually becomes an empire. So around 509 BCE, Rome was a small little city. The wealthy Roman aristocrats are going to boot out the ruler and establish a republic. Senatus Populesque Romanus, the Senate and the people of Rome. Hopefully my high school Latin teacher is not listening. What is a republic? A republic is a form of government in which citizens elect representatives. In the case of the Roman Republic, they refer to them as senators to rule on their behalf. So it's distinct from a democracy. In a, in a direct democracy, people are voting directly on the issues. In the case of a republic, people vote for elected representatives to make decisions on their behalf. Now, this should sound familiar to you. And to the republic for which it stands. Because our government was initially set up as a republic, and it was based on the model of the Roman Republic. When Benjamin Franklin exited the Constitutional Convention, he was asked what type of government did the Founding Fathers establish, and he said, a republic, if we can keep it. The Founding Fathers were very dubious of democracy because they were fearful of giving the people too much power. As the Roman Republic was expanding across the Mediterranean Sea, they came in contact with another society that was even more powerful than they were, the Carthaginians. As a result of this contact, a conflict began pitting the Romans against the Carthaginians. This is known as the Punic Wars. So Carthage started out as a city in North Africa that was first developed by the Phoenicians. During this war, probably most famously, 
the Carthaginian general Hannibal brought a group of elephants across the Mediterranean and through the Alps and then used them in battle against the Roman army. So these are known as the Punic Wars, and the real cause of the Punic Wars was a fight for control of the Mediterranean Sea. The Carthaginians had been the strongest naval power in the Mediterranean up to that point, but Rome was a up-and-coming challenger to their control of the Mediterranean Sea. Ultimately, the Romans win the Punic Wars and destroy Carthage, and this allows Rome to then expand its control over the Mediterranean Sea. At this point, around 146 BCE, do we have an empire yet? We have to ask ourselves, one, is it large? Yes. Is it diverse? Yes. Is it single centrally ruled? No, because there is this Senate and therefore there's no single central ruler. So we still don't quite, based upon our definition, have an empire yet. As the Roman Republic is expanding, it's bringing in more soldiers into its army. It's strengthening its army. It's incorporating more soldiers from the various conquered population as most strong empires successfully do. This is part of that unification process of bringing together diverse peoples. It also is developing a unifying legal code, which was known as the Twelve Tables. So we start to see the beginnings of that process of unification in the Republic, both through the development of the Republican form of government and also the establishment of a unifying legal code, which then it could apply to other territories that it then conquered with its increasingly um, strong army. A growing gap, though, eventually is going to start to form between the rich and the poor. We've seen this in other empires like in Han China. In 59 BCE, there was a general named Julius Caesar who was elected consul. The consuls were elected among the various senators. There was actually two of them elected to these positions of higher power within the Senate. And Julius Caesar was elected consul in 59 BCE. He is going to be successful as a military general and ultimately begin to engender the loyalty of his troops. And those troops, because many of them are from these conquered territories, are ultimately more loyal to the generals like Caesar rather than to the Roman Republic because ultimately it's the generals who are paying their salaries. So a civil war breaks out between Caesar and some of the other Roman generals and Caesar is successful. He wins. And at that point, he declares himself dictator for life. He then returns to Rome, where the senators begin to conspire against them. They are concerned that he has stolen some of the power of the Senate, and they conspire to assassinate him. So in 44 BCE, Julius Caesar is assassinated on the floor of the Senate by some senators who stab him to death. Another civil war breaks out uh, after Caesar's death, and the winner of that civil war is Augustus, who is also referred to as the emperor, also in the context of the Roman Empire, they're referred to as the Caesars because they, they drew upon his example. The Senate still exists at this point, but is relatively powerless. Now, the emperor is going to take on a divine godlike role, and we can see this in this statue of Augustus. You can see his kind of chiseled good looks. He's wearing a military breastplate here, suggestive of his command of the military. Also, who is this down here, this little baby that's hanging onto his leg? That's Cupid, who is a Roman god, so he's so strong and powerful that he hangs out with gods. Notice also another thing that's common to gods is that they don't wear shoes. And the same thing here. So um, Augustus Caesar is not wearing shoes, which is suggestive of his sort of divine godlike state. So in 27 BCE, Augustus is named emperor. And as a result, we are into the period of the formation of the empire because the empire is now large, it's diverse, and it has one single central ruler. So as a result of watching this video, you should be able to answer these two big questions. First, how did the location of Rome impact its development? And second, how did Rome transform from a republic into an empire? Thanks for watching.
application of Rome impact its development? Second, how did Rome transform from a republic into an empire? And then there'll be another video that'll cover two more big questions relating to Rome. So the first big question, how did the location of Rome impact its development? The city of Rome is centrally located on the Mediterranean Sea that were first developed by the Phoenicians and then later used by the Greeks. Now, like other cities in the classical era, Rome became a center for trade. Throughout the city, there were a number of markets that developed. There was an imperial palace, which was the central location for the government Mediterranean Sea. It's also located on the Tiber River in the center of the Italian peninsula, which meant that it had a geographically strategic spot, and this would allow it to be accessible to a number of existing trade routes across the Mediterranean. Welcome back, young scholars. In this video, we will be discussing Rome in the Classical Age. So the big questions you need to be able to answer after watching this video are first, how did the location